What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com. Now for anybody who's used Photoshop before or is somewhat familiar with it, you'll know that you have the ability to undo or step backwards in case you make a mistake. And this has saved my ass plenty of times, but what I wanna do today is show you guys a better way to do this using something called snapshots. Now I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this, but in my experience, it's a bit of an underutilized feature that a lot of people don't really know much about. So I wanna show this to you guys to help you improve your workflow and to give you a better way to save your work at different points throughout the design process in Photoshop. So today we're going to be taking a look at the history panel as well as a very handy feature called a snapshot, which I'm not sure if a lot of people use or if they're familiar with it, but uh, recently somebody had requested a tutorial on this, so I figured why not? Let's uh, jump right into it. So here I've got this you know, cool looking image of a football player, which I already went ahead and just siloed out so that I could remove this white background. So if I open this group folder here, you'll see I've got the player on, an, on one layer and I have the background on another. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a couple of you know fairly straightforward and easy effects to this image. So what I'm gonna do first is double click on the background and add a radial gradient overlay. All right, and I'm just gonna change some of these settings here uh, before we get into it so that I can show you guys how this works. So we've got our background, I'm gonna create a new layer and grab my brush tool. Now here I've just preloaded some explosion brushes uh, that I have that I've downloaded. And basically all I'm gonna do is take that, take my presets over here, and maybe we can you know, tweak some of these settings. So I just wanna test this brush out, see if it's any good, and find one that you know, looks kinda of cool like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is increase the spacing a little bit check off shape dynamics and jack up the size jitter as well as the angle jitter and I've also checked off the boxes for flip x jitter and flip y jitter which basically just means that you know it's going to randomize these quite a bit so that it's not just an exact um, copy each time that I use it and I'm also going to come over here and check off the scattering box which will as you can see in the preview on the bottom down here which will scatter our brush and if you want to increase the number of brushes, you can just raise the count here as well. Okay, so now once I've done that, I can come in here, I've just got a solid white selected, and my brush is set to 100% opacity. Okay, so I'm just going to start clicking around, and I think the count is a little bit too high, I'm just going to bring that back down, and I'm just going to start, you know, painting with this brush a little bit, adding some of these explosion clouds here and there, and maybe put a few behind the player as well just to mix it up, all right? Now what I'm gonna do is actually move this to the background and let's say I wanna change the blending mode to uh, screen or maybe even something like overlay. Yeah, let's go with overlay. All right, I'm gonna create another new layer and this time I will switch up my brush and I'm just gonna use a regular white brush here. And again, just kind of click around uh, the player like so maybe some stuff towards the bottom here. I'm gonna double click on it and change the color so that it kind of matches this darker red color on the bottom like that. Okay, and let's see how that looks behind the player. I'll keep it in front for now. All right, so at this point, if I wanted to undo any of the stuff I've just done, I could come up here to the edit menu and choose step backward, right? I could do command Z and that would undo one step, or I could do, you know, command Option Z and that would probably undo maybe up to five or ten times But if you need to go even farther back to previous steps as you're working on an image I'm going to show you guys how to do that. You can come up here to your history panel or come up to window history and This will show you a history of all the stuff here that you've recorded Now at the very top you can see you have a thumbnail here that just says the name of the file. It's a stock image that I downloaded from Deposit Photos with my account. But if I'm happy with uh, the state of my design at this moment, I can do what is called, you know, I can take what is called a snapshot by clicking down here on this icon that looks like a camera. 
and you'll see as I hover over it, it says create new snapshot. So I'm going to click that, and now up here, you'll see I have snapshot one. Snapshot one, okay? So what I can do now is I'm just going to continue working on this image a little bit, and maybe I'll change up my brush again, just to keep things interesting here and not, you know, overuse the same brush. Um, let's see, I don't think I used that one. Right, it gives me kind of a cool outline here, and I'm just going to continue adding to this, right? And you know, I can I can mess with the settings a little bit like I did before, maybe scatter it a little bit, something like that. All right, and I just want this to look like these, you know, billowing clouds of smoke, plumes of smoke, or whatever you would call them. And you guys can kind of see where I'm going with this. I just want to mix it up and add some variety to it. So I'm going to do another new layer and add a few more of these clouds here. All right, increase the, decrease the spacing a little bit. And just try to randomize it. All right, something like that. Now I can take this layer, do the same thing where I change the color of the brush, just in my layer style dialog box there. And then I'll take my very top copy and say, you know, see what happens if I change it to overlay, color dodge, something like this. Okay, and at this point, I can go ahead and take yet another snapshot. All right, and this is basically going to save and remember wherever you were at that point in your design process. So let's say that, you know, I, I was working on this for a while and I added a lot more of these brushes or, you know, modified it, moved some things around, um, even making copies of uh, some of these previous layers, right? Or if I wanted to even maybe mask out my football player image a little bit, I could do that as well. So let's select the player here, and I'm just going to add a mask and then fade from the bottom up so it looks like he's kind of coming out of some of this smoke now, right? It's kind of cool. All right, and then I'll duplicate that again, add some smoke behind him this time, and maybe change the color just so you guys can see that I'm changing quite a few settings. I'm changing, you know, a bunch of stuff here as I work. All right, and then I'll add one more snapshot. All right, so at this point, I would not be able to just simply undo and go all the way back to the beginning, but what a snapshot allows you to do is just come back here and it will remember exactly, you know, the settings and layers and everything that you had at that point in time. So it's a really handy and useful way that you can kind of save these different points in your design as you go. So even if you got, you know, all the way to the end and you said, oh man, I, I wish I could remember, you know, what I did earlier on, um, that's when you would really want to use a snapshot. All right, again, here I could have another snapshot of just a different color option. So it will remember, you know, your layers, your color settings, everything as you work. So it's a really useful and, and I think kind of an underutilized uh, feature in Photoshop that maybe people aren't you know super familiar with or, or comfortable using. Um, and it's just something that I've started using more in my own work as well uh, because sometimes you do get kind of like lost in the design process when you know it can be nice to be able to go back uh, to an earlier point. Okay, so uh, let's just say See right there, I just went back to snapshot four. Snapshot four, three, two, one, and then our original image here. And you'll see in the layers palette, it's actually updating at the same time. So those are uh, some really cool things that you can do uh, using the history panel and the snapshots over here. All right, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully learned something new along the way. Um, hopefully I've answered your questions, but if not, please leave us a comment, uh, give us a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and sign up for the email list as well. All right, thank you guys, as always, for watching. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time.